Hello, my name's Eric Grigg and I work at Lincoln Castle as part of the Investigate Learning Team. And we've put this film together as part of our Digital Archaeology Festival to look at some hidden secrets of Lincoln Castle. Some bits are places you can get to in the castle and you can see on a normal visit and this will give you sort of further insights into the castle. Other bits are places that you can't get to for lots of health and safety, lots of other really valid reasons. Um, and it gives you a sort of behind the scenes look at some of the weirder aspects of the history of Lincoln Castle. So, remember some of these are in spots that you can't normally visit and I will tell you which ones you can see and which ones you can't see as you go around. This one is hidden. It's sort of a bit of a wall that has no public access to and it's a little bit of a 15th century probably gravestone and it's been reused probably in the 19th century to fix a bit of the wall and it's stuck there on the outside wall of Lincoln Castle so it's a bit of medieval stonework in a medieval wall that was put up there in Victorian times. Our next location is at the southern wall of Lincoln Castle at the bottom of the upstair as indicated on our lovely map here. In the wall there's a curving line of stones and that's where there used to be a small little postern gate or a side gate which is gives easy access in and out the castle so you don't have to go all the way around to the main gate and it means if anyone's attacking your walls you can sally out and duff them up. Um, there is a reference to someone being granted the right to build a gateway through the wall um, somewhere between about 1101 and 1115 and about 1115 is when the walls of the castle which had originally been wooden burnt down and were replaced in stone so we think this might refer to this gateway being built and the curved brown top Romanesque sort of architecture looks all about right so when you walk past that bit of the walls and see that that's an old gateway now we're not a mott and bailey castle we're a mott and bailey castle because we got two mots and there used to be a wall walk between one and the other the lucy tower on the left and the ops tower on the bottom right the wall here has been much altered but there's some odd features for example on the left hand side of the Lucy Tower is a flat space and someone's left a chair up there they've obviously been sitting up there in the sun and there used to be a room there and there used to be a little doorway from the Lucy Tower early 19th century that had gone so that little flat space is the remains of this room the Ops Tower though is has been modified and it is a nightmare to try and decipher which bits of which age you've got arrow slits and a little bit of decorative heads on the outside and we think lots of these are Victorian when they rebuilt the Ops Tower they rebuilt it in 1815 but in a lovely set of crenellations on the top the crenellations are the up and downy bits of the walls in the 1840s they modified it and they knocked out some of the crenellations to make it look a bit ruinous and oldie woldy so that the obst tower is i've been around it so many times and constantly scratching my head trying to work out which bits are the original proper medieval bits and which bits in the 19th century have been modified the outer barbicans well when you go through the main gate today what you don't know is outer gates and as you approach the castle you might see these round cobbles on the ground and they mark some outer towers there was a big battle in Lincoln in 1217 in 1230 to improve the defensive nature of the castle they built two extra outer turrets now these were demolished in the 1790s because it was difficult getting traffic in and out but the cobbles are there marking where they used to be the outside edge of one of these towers can be seen but both from the public it can only be seen from our walls it's in a private garden now now 
What's that funny window up there? It's not a window, it's a door. There used to be wooden hoardings over the walls where people could drop stones down on enemies attacking the walls. And that door would have given access to it. So that's door for one of the inner towers of the big gateway. Cobb Hall. Now outside Cobb Hall, so when you go in the ground, if you walk up into the tower in the corner, you might see this funny lump of stone and think, what's that? Well, actually, it's meant to be a lion and a knight. That's what we think it might have looked like. And these, there was two of them, stood in the gate way to Lincoln Castle. And they're part of these 1230 modifications. So outer turrets built and on the inside, they put these lovely decorative lions and knights flanking the entrance to guard the castle. But only one survives. Luckily, Ian Fox has done a lovely little drawing of what this could have looked like. And it would have stood on the right hand side as you walked into the castle. And here for the first time ever is a picture of what the lion and the knight would have looked like as you walk into Lincoln Castle. Now in the basement of Cobb Hall, some lovely graffiti. We don't condone doing graffiti on our walls now, please leave our walls alone. But in the medieval time, sometime in the 14th or the 15th century, someone drew a hunting scene with a deer. And just around the corner, which is why the photo is a different colour, is the back end of what is probably a hunting dog. Now through the neck of the deer is a crossbow bolt. That's how they used to finish off deer when hunting. And behind it, it's not a fidget spinner. It's called a trellis. It's a triple sort of decoration that you get a lot of the time in medieval times. Now at the top of that picture, you might see some writing. Let's blow up some of these pictures. This is an older picture taken about 60 years ago of the deer. You can see it a little bit more clearly in the trellis and the writing. And if we blow up the writing, it's about the same date, and we think it says, thank God. So what they thought, thanked God for? I don't know. Bit of archeology, span things that are buried under the ground. Well, we've had a couple of digs recently. The most famous one was during the Castle Reveal project. There's one of the archeologists, Cecily, um, digging up the uh, Anglo-Scandinavian church we found. And some of the archaeology is still under the walkway on the entrance to the Magna Carta vault. But as well as there's an older one, and these are pictures taken on my rather rubbish phone camera at the time, where we found where the big curly whirly stairs are that go up onto the walls, we found the start of a series of curved stairs. Now this is these are medieval stairs, as well as the curved stairs. This was the start of an entrance of a tunnel. Now there's a 19th century account of them saying they found these curved stairs and the entrance of the tunnel. The tunnel goes off westwards towards where the Georgian prison and the castle shop is. It's too dangerous to excavate the tunnel, too costly. So I always wonder what might be down there. The location of this dig and the strange medieval building with the curly stairs and the tunnel going off is around the back of the South Lodge. So on the left, as you go in the main entrance of Lincoln Castle, South Lodge was built on the site of the old turnkeys huts in 1820. And the weird thing about the floor plan of the South Lodge is there's a missing room. There's a room you can't get to. There's a blocked out space. And what we think is it's a bit of wall for this big medieval building that was on the left. And they just rather knocked down that big lump of wall. They just built round it and just blocked it in. So missing room in that block of offices. Now, We've got two lovely old prisons on the left, but on the right on the north lawns where everyone has their picnics is the site of the old prison. We had some geophysics done once and I think archaeologists hate it when people say it's like an X-ray. It's sort of ground penetrating radar, magnetometry, etc. helps you see features that are buried under the ground. 
and there is a definite a feature there that's where the prism was we have old plans showing what the prism looked like and we have descriptions and using that I've got my dad he's an architect to draw up a plan of what it would have looked like in the basement there were vaulted stone cells then two floors then the top floor in the attic with some celestial windows um, is the top floor the third floor knocked down in 1787 and the big brick building you can see when you go in the entrance is the replacement other things buried underground well a couple of years ago there was a really long hot summer and in the exercise yard some strange lines appeared in the grass let me pick them out for you well the dark red ones are the old internal walls of the exercise yard we know about them um, and these be iron railings and the iron railings were taken away in the war um, as part of the war effort though I don't know how anyone managed to make spitfires out of raw iron but the other lines seem to be the old stables and the stables we can't date them exactly they are there's a plan in 1782 where they're not there so probably after 1782 and definitely knocked down by 1846 when the new prison was built and they're marked here so that seems to be the wall of stables of course only way of getting around in those days is horseback what else is buried under the ground the old shire hall got the crown court but in front of that isn't this would have been administered that also appears on the geophysics and on old plans with little bays on either end and we know from some really small sort of drawings of it on older plans and descriptions of the building and knowing what buildings at the time looked like we can work out roughly what it looked like and there you go there's my dad again draw me a lovely picture of what the shire hall might have looked like now the victorian prism which is on the left there um, that was built and they knocked down the old Georgian prison there's some weird doors though in that Victorian prison that look out of character with the rest the doors on the punishment cells and some doors in the cellars like this now these are obviously prison doors they're thick they've got these big sort of grated windows on them and big sort of rivets going through uh, but if you look at the back of them you can see from the hinges there's loads of marks that have been rehung somewhere and sometimes they've been roughly cut at the edge so we think they're from the old Georgian prison that was at the back of the Georgian debtors prison the bit that survives so the surviving bit the brick building where the ticket office and the shop is and the cafe that was where the debtors where people owed money were imprisoned behind if you're involved in theft or violence you're in the felons prison that gets knocked down and a Victorian prison built and you get these odd doors and as I say that one's in the basement I think they're from this Georgian prison where else would they be from if you're knocking down a Georgian prison you don't go to the prison door surplus shop miles away you just reuse those prison doors as and where you can the mortuary now underneath the cafe is a mortuary now bats are in there now so it's all blocked off so the bats aren't disturbed but you can see the slab on the left where the bodies were taken um, and there's a big stone sink there as well so you cut the bits off and you can wash them in the sink um, if someone was hanged they would be taken down there and cut up they're not trying to work out how they died you have 10,000 people have watched them being strung up everyone know how they've died it's a part of this 19th century thing of trying to work out how the body worked and try and work out how fit or any problems there were with the prisoners now just off camera to the left is a little alcove with a door in it and a blocked window now that goes underground where to now apparently in the basement of the crown court near where the cells are there's another blocked door and there's a filled in tunnel that led from the prison to the courthouse so the prisoner when it had been taken to court could be taken through the tunnel and brought back again without any fear of his mates trying to rescue him 
water supply and ventilation. When the Victorian prison was built, they had a couple of problems getting good water supply into it and a smell from the drains. So up in the roof space, which is ridiculously over engineered for a roof space, you can see on the left those brick sort of long box things. They're part of the ventilation system of sucking air out of the prison. And there was accounts of the doctor going in one day and smashing some windows just to get some air in because the sewers kept blocking up. And there's also a water tank that's been installed. Initially, they had a real problem with water supply. And initially, they had to send all the sheets and the clothes of the prisoners out to get washed, which was very expensive. So they worked out a way of pumping water into the roof into these water tanks and the geophysics you can see the lines those white lines of the water supply pipes coming from where the well and the cistern in the bathhouse was and underneath the men's prison there was a pump and they'd pump the water up into the roof into these tanks and then by gravity it would feed of the women's prison the female wing where this is in the learning space and not normally open to the public is where the laundry was and we've tried to recreate the laundry there and you can see on your left um, a pump where you can pump the water out that came from the tap up in the roof now this is a feature that i passed a hundred times before someone pointed it out and said what's that and i went oh never noticed it it's a bus superficially looks a bit like a classical thing like a roman emperor with laurel leaves around his head but it's probably victorian it's not made from a particularly good bit of stone there's a bit of a cracking by his mouth and it looks like he's been in the wars a bit well, we think it's a typical victorian style thing that you would have in your garden so the governor in the early sort of mid 19th century probably had this in the ground somewhere and then later when these walls were being modified Someone said, oh, let's put it up on the wall. At the base of the Obs Tower is a couple of other interesting well, recent features. On your left is where the staff and the volunteers might give you your audio guide or help you through the turnstiles up onto the walls. And there's a funny little hole there. Let's blow that up a bit. That's because that used to be the urinals for the gents and that's the outlet. But don't, please don't wee in their hut now. On the right is a stone that I passed loads of times before. Someone said, what's that writing on it? And it's at the base of the Obs Town near where that postern gate was I showed you earlier. Now this bit of lettering confused me. 1114 until I realised the second number was a 9. It's SRHS 1914. So is it someone with two middle names or is it two people and they were there in 1914? We think it was uh, the castle was used as a muster station in World War One or it could have just been a casual visitor. So I said earlier, though, please don't graffiti our walls. Filming. Well, there's been lots of filming at the castle. Downton Abbey used it and their props were fascinating. They're all made out of salt balsa wood and they look metal they look sturdy but they're light as a feather um, picture on the right is one of the light switches that they put over our modern electrical fittings um, if you try to flick that switch it would break off instantly we also had time team i'm always saddened that i never ever got to appear on time team but i got to see them film and there's phil harding at the top there um, giving a talk up on the walls and at one point I was given the task of holding Phil Harding's hat. So there you go, there's Phil Harding's hat. For some reason, I didn't get a picture of me holding Phil Harding's hat. That's me taking a picture of the producer holding Phil Harding's hat. That only excites anyone that was watched Time Team. The odd thing is a member of, ex-member of Time Team now lives in Lincoln and I'm on first name terms. So they, they don't seem so, they seem more real unless uh, like, television stars now so i've got over me time team thing bottom left is um where top gear or two-thirds of them visited the castle they were trying to make the point it takes electrical cars a long time to recharge so 
they did lots of tours and the idea was they're going to be very bored on their tours and I hope that Jeremy and James weren't too bored on their tour. The castle guides always tell a story of how scary their first guided tour was um, and I always trumped them because that was my first ever guided tour and it was filmed for Top Gear and of course Top Gear syndicated across the world so what three seconds of my tour which is probably all they used ended up getting broadcast all over the world. So I hope you enjoyed that little tour, little talk around some really odd bits of Lincoln Castle. We did this as part of our Archaeology Festival 2020 that we decided to do online because of the coronavirus pandemic. We went digital um, late July to the first day of August. Thank you very much for listening.